Okay, uh, in this video, we want to talk a little bit about parametric equations and how you can apply the chain rule to them to obtain derivative expressions that aren't, uh, that you can't get immediately from uh, looking at what equations you have. And a parametric equation essentially is when you introduce a third variable. For example, suppose we have a particle that is moving and we're concerned about the velocity of the particle and the acceleration of the particle. So here it might be useful to express x, the x component of the particle, as some function of t, the time, and also express the y component of the particle's motion as a function of time. So for example, it might be that we have a particle moving so that x is equal to, say, the cosine of omega t, and y is equal to the sine of omega t. So that at any particular time t, we can figure out what x is and what y is very conveniently. It's no problem. And this particle then would also have for its velocity it would have an x component and a y component and we can figure those out very easily. It's x component velocity vx that's just dx dt and that will be equal to we take the derivative of this the derivative of the cosine of course is minus the sine of omega t and then we take the derivative of what's inside of here and that would be omega times dt dt which is just one so it's minus omega and vy that would just be the cosine well let's write it like this vy that equals dy dt and that will equal the cosine of omega t times omega now if we wanted to we could write this equation saying vx equals minus w times y or we could say vy is equal to w times x um, we can go that way if we want to also let's say that we wanted to find the acceleration and we'll keep it in this form here to give us more practice so ax that will equal the squared x dt squared or that will equal d dt of minus omega times the sine of omega t and of course this derivative here is going to be the cosine of omega t times omega so we have ax equals minus omega squared times the cosine of omega t and for a the acceleration in the y direction that will be d dt of omega times the cosine of omega t and the derivative of this is minus the sine of omega t times omega so this quantity here will be minus omega squared times the sine of omega t so a y equals minus omega squared 
times the sine of omega t. Cosine of omega t, though, that's just x. And the sine of omega t, that's just y. So we can say ax, that equals minus omega squared times x. That's the acceleration in the x direction. And the acceleration in the y direction is just minus omega squared times y. So you see, there are situations um, where it can be very handy. Instead of saying, instead of saying, y is equal to um, some constant times x cubed minus 3 times the sine of x or whatever, it's more convenient sometimes to say, well, if we're interested in, in the motion of an object, it might be more convenient to say y is equal to some function of t, and x is equal to another function of t, and then at any particular time of t, we can figure out, we can determine what y and x are. That's no problem. And by having things expressed in this form, it's very easy, for example, to determine the x component of the velocity or the y component of the acceleration with no problem. So it can be very convenient to sometimes have equations written in this parametric form. But really, you have three variables. We have x, and we have y, and now we have the variable t, and x and y are both expressed as different functions of this variable t. And we kind of want to do a little demonstration here to show you why it can be convenient to have them written in this form. Well, that's well and good, but suppose that we also wanted to know what is y dx? So we know what this is, and, well, let's see, we know what this is, and we know what this is. We're not interested in dx dt and dy dt. We want to know what is, well, just a second, let's make some more room here. We want to find out what is dy dx. You want to know this. Well, here's where the chain rule comes in. We can say that would be equal to dy dt times dt dx. And you can think of these dt's canceling each other out. You have dy dx. And do we know what these values are? Sure we do. dy dt is this, and dx dt is this, so this will be equal to dy dt, that's this, omega times the cosine of omega t, divided by I say divided by because here we have dt dx and dt dx that's the one over dx dt so that's going to be multiplied by the reciprocal of this so let's put this in the denominator so we'll have minus omega times the sine of omega t and these cancel and we can say this would be equal to minus cosine divided by sine, the cotangent of omega t. That is what dy dx would be. Also, though, we can look at this equation here. This is true, but the cosine of omega t, what is that? That's x. And the sine of omega t, that's y. So we can say that dy dx
which we determine by using the chain rule here, that is equal to minus x divided by y, or we could say it is minus, keeping it in parametric form, times the cotangent of omega t. Either way is right, of course. Um, let's say, though, that we wanted to go one step further. Say we wanted to find d squared y dx squared. Well, if we have it in this form here, we can just go right ahead and do it. But suppose that the equation is, is, is in this parametric form, and we wanted to use the parametric equation to determine dy dx. How can we do that? Um, we may not have enough time remaining in this video to complete that. So come back, join us in the next video. What we will do is we will determine what d squared what the second derivative is. From this, we will also determine what it is from this parametric equation here, and then we'll see are these two going to turn out to be equal to each other. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll try to finish off the rest of the problem.